Inside the birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan here. It's Inside the Birds, and the birds are going to the Super Bowl. And that's a little history also for Inside the Birds, as this will be kind of the first uh, ITB Super Bowl coverage podcast as we start, uh, you know, really getting into the game, what happened there in the NFC Championship against the 49ers. We'll get into everything. Adam, you're already uh, sort of in your bowl mode because you are down in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl doing uh, some practice watching and some networking. How is it down there? It's Good. Nice it's and- actually, believe it or not, on Tuesday, you might be able to tell. I can't, I don't know how light, how good my lighting is here, but I got a farmer stand. <laughs> as you all know, you've lived it here as well as I have. This is my 20, 22nd Senior Bowl. To get, tell you how many years I've been coming here, jo- uh, Josh McCown and uh, the names, Josh McCown and Brian Westbrook were at my first one in 02. Oh, my gosh. I know, I know. And my first ever Eagle scoop, I said the Eagles are going to uh, – something like Tony Pauline, my friend who does draft stuff, remind me of it. said, your, your scoop from here, your scoop uh, that the Eagles going to draft in the third round, that's where they drafted him. Mm. Um, he was dynamic here, but it's funny. I won't name the – I won't out the coach. D. West did. All, he he didn't say it either, but one of the coaches here told him that he would be no better than a punt returner. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh, he always saved the day. You're absolutely right. That's right. But, uh, I love coming down here. And as you know, the weather here is so, so crazy. So on Monday, you know, I got here Monday afternoon. It was overcast, awful, humid in 50. Sometimes you come here and it's late, thir- high 30s, low 40s and rainy. It usually rains here. It's the rainy season. In uh, Alabama, New Orleans, because New Orleans is uh, only a couple hours away. I have no idea how this happened. The forecast completely changed. It was supposed to be low 60s and cloudy. Got up to 80 on Tuesday, and it was sunny. It was just, you can see, if you follow me on IG, I, I put a uh, uh, post up. It's ridiculously, it was beautiful. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so, you and I have a friend in the financial uh, business one of the top financial advisors for NFL players. He left practice. He said there was too much sun. He had to get out. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was like, it's like, hey, I want to get lunch, but man, this like, enough of the heat and the sun. Meanwhile, yeah. the rest of the nation's under some polar ice worm, uh, ice uh, uh, yeah. winter storm warning that's about to happen. So yeah, poor yeah. guy. So yeah, anyway, no. so yeah, look, it, it, this is, it's cool. Look, the, the, the quarterback group here is not great. That's the word coming from personal people. Some good corners. Uh, we what I like to do is just talk to the people who are, who are watching the practice tape because I, I, a lot of stuff out there is just not correct. Or how play, see too many of the, the, the draft analysts they look at two or three plays and will say, okay, that guy's good or bad. It's not the way it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're they're working specific drills. They're asked to do specific things. And quarterbacks here, I remember Nick Foles came here. He didn't have a good week. Well, they were asking him to change his footwork here because of the type of offense they were running. I, whoever coached him. He was not used to, so his footwork was all messed up. Well, that's why he struggled there. Right. But give any read credit for drafting him higher. This is Paul in 2012. He drafted him higher than their draft grade. Uh, they didn't have a third-round grade. They had a lower grade. So it's funny. He, you never know what you're going to see. I, Matt Matt uh, Jones, from Arkansas quarterback, came here as a receiver, became a first-round pick because he was unbelievable here. Mm-hmm. No one could cover him. Uh, you might remember – now, for you old-time draft people, you might remember – Ricardo Copley out of Tusculum. He, Tusculum. Uh, I know, I, I didn't know about the school then until he was here. He went from being a fifth round grade, a fifth round, he had a fifth round grade, from sixth round grade. He, he blew it up here, was the second rounder for Pittsburgh. He didn't do very well as a pro, he was below average. And then Antoine Randall, Antoine Randall came here. He was an IU quarterback. Remember that slot receiver here. Went from being a late six or seven round pick to it. He was dominant and a pretty good player at the NFL level as a slot receiver. So you never know. Guys, uh, Eagles, I know, you and I know this. A lot of our listeners and viewers know. Eagles have a history of drafting players from the senior bowl. Robert Bunkley, I remember. Uh, well, no, he, he became an Eagle. Connor Barwin toured up here. He was great. In fact, Connor was a basketball player at UC. He also played tight end and he also played defensive end. And he was a linebacker here, I think. And the Texans drafted him, what was he, second round or something? Uh, either a second or a third, yeah. Okay. And he's a really good player for the Eagles, obviously. So mm. you could you could 
You have to be careful, though. Um, Eagles obviously have missed on players here. Danny Watkins is the worst example of it, best worst example. You have to take it for the three days of practice. Only two really matter. The Tuesdays and Wednesday practice. Friday's late like a NFL practice for a Sunday game, like an hour. They're in shorts and T-shirts, and Saturday's the game. So it's those Tuesday and Wednesday practices. And look, there's some draft balance that are really good to know what they're looking at, but too many of them overrate certain things. you got to be careful what you're looking at. Yeah, the one thing that uh, when it comes to quarterbacks at the, the at the Senior Bowl that coaches and, and scouts have always said to me is that the first real practice is always – it's always a tough one for the quarterbacks, especially – the ones who have good arms but aren't uh, may not be accurate on the first day doesn't mean that they lack accuracy or struggle with it. A lot of times, obviously, you're working with guys you've never thrown to ever until that day. So they always look for how a guy does on day two and day three from an accuracy standpoint, especially if the arm is there. That's what they look for. But and it is, it's you know, football is such a team game. It's really tough to all of a sudden get together with you know 21 other guys on a field and and really know where everybody is and what to do. Uh, they try to keep it basic, but that's why the one-on-ones and the drills and some of the other things you, oh, can, you can also get so some really great. good intel on how people use their technique and their fundamentals. I, I love that stuff. I live. For I that. love it. The pit, they call it the pit back. Uh, for those of you who follow the shooter ball there, they don't do this now. They all have them at net. They've moved it from lad people stadium because it's an older stadium. And it, I don't know how safe it is because there it needs work to you to uh, university of South Alabama. That's where Jalen Tolbert, the fourth rounder receiver, mm-hmm. went uh, for the Cowboys receiver. Uh, they've had a couple guys draft the last couple of years. It's there. It's beautiful, beautiful campus and beautiful stadium. Uh, but because it's not, it's not like a um, the pit would be at one of the high schools where there would be like a pitcher's mound and they would dig it out and the offensive lineman would go against a defensive line. It was so great. Those one on ones that you're talking about mm-hmm. were so great. I remember Danny Watkins picked up, and then it's unfortunate. I think it was Watkins. Wait, was it Watkins? It was definitely an offensive lineman going to defensive lineman, and he picked up the – oh, I think it was O'Brien Schofield. Okay, it was O'Brien Schofield. It was me out here. I, I don't want to say it was – may or may not have been Watkins. This is so long ago, but somebody picked him up. And, no, it might have been Vlad Dukas. I'm not sure. Mm. Somebody picked up O'Brien Schofield and just threw him down. He, I think he blew his knee out. Oh, um, boy. Who was that – where did he go to Wisconsin? Who was uh, Vlad Dukas? No, Vlad Dukas went to UMass, but no, UMass, uh, right. I forget where O'Brien Schofield, but Wisconsin sounds familiar. That, yeah. that might have been the place. But it was an unbelievable drill. Is that I love watching the, those uh, drills that you're talking about, and mm-hmm. then also the one on ones receivers against the corners. There's a we're going to talk more. We're not going to really do this. Is more uh, today, today's show is more about the Eagles and obviously the Chiefs and a little bit of the Chiefs, but mostly on the Eagles and what the tape looked like last week, but. One of the things we'll talk more about when we get intel on what the practice tape looked like, the kid, for those of you who really follow the draft, the kid um, Moss, the corner from Iowa, I'd heard about him. Just to see him up close, I'm like, it's one of these things you scratch your head, like, how the hell is this guy not a first-round pick? It's a right. super twitched-up corner, great size, but and he did very well in one-on-ones and some well in team. But you always have to get through what kind of tape looked in the season, whether what's one of the interviews, you have to go through everything, but – the cool thing is here before we move on, you get to see the raw talent here going one on one. It's pretty cool. Definitely. My favorite uh, story of Lad Peebles, by the way, is one year Comcast Sportsnet sent me out there without Derek Gunn. They uh-huh. sent me out there to write stories and do oh TV. My. Alone? Yes. Oh my well, God, I so mean, with work. a camera crew, but not Derek Gunn. Yeah. who is like my mentor for the TV side, right? I mean, the writing I got. <laughs> but it was really hard to do both jobs, but they had me... That's and I mean. Lad Peebles to do Philly sports, a live hit from on what was the show? Philly sports talk. It, used no, to be course, yeah, News live. it was Daily News live before that. Yeah. Right. So it was Philly sports talk in the five o'clock hour. The Mark news show that always followed after in the six o'clock hour. News they always night. did another one. In sports eight, night. Yeah. Sports night at either eight or nine o'clock. I had to do four hits from five till 10 o'clock at night before I even That's wrote I anything. Mean. And the funny thing is, the, they didn't know this. The stadium closes at 8. The janitor was getting mad at me and threatening to lock up the stadium with me in it. And I had to make a decision so between great. whether to do a live TV hit or get out of that stadium and be safe. And, of course, well, I went with the paycheck. I stayed in the stadium and did my did live like, TV hit. <laughs> wait a minute. Did you go up? Because, you know, one of the things, folks, here that, that you do is you get you get a lot of good information when you go out. 
And that's the beauty about being here. It's pretty relaxed. But, um, oh, you know who I saw here before we move on to get started is Lance Crawford. Remember he worked at CSN? CSN Conference oh, Business. yeah, I remember Lance. Remember Lance? Yeah, 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 he works here at University of South Alabama. He, he did TV here for uh, here for years. and Right. So he's now working for the university. So it was right. good to see him out here. Great to see him. You know what's also going to be great? It's going to be great that ITB is going to the Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona next week. We are really fan, just excited about being able to do this. Uh, we're, we're going to be out there. Adam and I will be doing, and Andrew DiCecco. Andrew DiCecco from InsideTheBirds.com will be out there as well. And the plan right now is to bring to ITB live stream shows throughout the day from Radio Row. We're still working, still organizing, still planning on how it's going to happen. But just think about some, you know, it used to be in Sports Talk Radio, they would send either a morning show or an afternoon show there, and you would have a four-hour block, and it would just interviews in and out in and out well that's what we are going to try to simulate ourselves we are going to do it we're going to have um you know guests from all around the national football league we're already lining some some up so it's going to be a really fun three days i've talked to six former eagles we've never had on before a couple of are down here they're absolutely said they'll do it they're probably gonna be a radio row they know who we are they know what we do so it's pretty cool don't want to give it away one in particular was kind of interesting he came up to me he goes man i love your guy's show i'm like Oh, okay. Wow. Nice. I said, you mean inside the birds, right? Just don't want to confuse you. <laughs> goes, Absolutely. You motion. I'm like, great. Awesome. He um, didn't say Bass Masters. <laughs> no, yeah, right. It's a Ghostbusters uh, reference. Very nice. But um, no, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful. Um we're gonna have great coverage. Like yeah, probably yeah. Sort of yeah. When we'll also be doing our podcast out there. And yeah, Decheco sure. is gonna stay and cover the game for inside the birds. So oh, be, is he? Yeah, he'll know. be out there okay. the whole time. He'll be at the wow. Super Bowl. We got to come he back. <laughs> Where's he staying? That's expensive out there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Tell me about it. So we, you and I got to come back. We're going to be yeah. doing our normal pregame show uh, from Rivers Casino, like we always do on Sundays. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's going to be a great week for ITB and we'll just, just be patient with us. We'll announce things when we know it, but that is our plan. And we're working on the details of everything we're going to do round the clock, pretty much from the time you're listening to this to the, the first day of shows. And we'll, let you know when we've got everything uh, ready and scheduled to go um, and probably look toward early next week. Per- when we'll do that. If we, if you're on our newsletter, we'll probably make some announcements. There. They'll probably first we'll announce it. I would think. Uh, yeah. Instead of Friday, when we use it instead of tomorrow on Friday, but um, uh, yeah, we cannot wait. This is amazing. And could, so, I mean, we, the NFL has been great with us so far. really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It's been kind of seamless so far. We'll have a table set up. We're going to be right on radio. Well, row. In fact, did did we not? T- did do we? Did I tape a, a pod with you last year from Radio Row with with video on YouTube? Didn't yes, I, do that? I think yeah. you did. You did, and I remember somebody walked by of Ryan Leaf, of someone Ryan notable. Leaf. Was it Ryan Leaf? It was Ryan Leaf, and I I know Ryan a little bit. Yeah, so uh-huh. I'm sure we can get him on. He's phenomenal. On, on Can't wait. That'll be great. He he's we'll, we'll get him on. But no, wait, wait to see the list of. Uh, Jeff had an unbelievable idea. If these guys, they're, they're a bunch of ex Eagles who I think we, Jeff and I both know. And if they're there at the same time, we're going to grab them. I don't care what we have to do. We're getting these guys. And uh, you you mentioned the names. And I'm like, oh my God, what a great idea. We have to pull this off. It's just one of these things like we were able to get Tory Smith last week. And that was phenomenal. He was unbelievable. You could all see it on YouTube or any platform. Tory was on it's one of our favorite interviews we've done in five years. Mm-hmm. What storytelling? Because he, remember, he caught. He caught passes from Flacco and and Nick Foles, two Super Bowl heroes. It's just his storytelling is phenomenal, and uh, I'm I'm hoping, um, yeah, the guys, a couple guys we, we've talked to last week say they're going to be there, and if they are there, this is going to be this is going to be pretty cool, no doubt about it. So we'll we'll probably be able to get you some ITB TVs on top of the live streams, and of course we'll do something special from Glendale out there while we're there for our Patreon subscribers. So if you want to get in on that, that's patreon.com slash inside the birds do a live stream oh we'll definitely do that as well sure all right um we're going to get into some of the updates as far as transactions and things like that because uh, and injuries and anything coming out of the game first we want to tell you to go get your game on at the gallery bar book and games and ocean casino resort this football season cheers your favorite drinks while cheering on your favorite team get in on a parlay while in the middle of a party 
Go for the sports scene and go for the endless screens. Go to the gallery. Go to Ocean. Go for the win. For more information, visit theoceanac.com. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. A um, little bit of an injury update, Adam. Uh, as obviously the Eagles came out of the NFC Championship, not totally unscathed, but also nothing I think that is dire. It sounds like they're going to be pretty healthy going into the Super Bowl. But everybody saw that Landon Dickerson left and he was, you know, he had the shoulder thing or the elbow thing going on there. And that caused some concern. Yeah. So what it is, is he could not bend his elbow. That's why he, that's why he couldn't finish the game. He's got a left elbow hyperextension, which if you remember, this is incredible. Namdi Asama, you and I were talking about this on Tuesday. Namdi Asama had it. I was, I was like, there the day what, I, I could have sworn he did it. Did he not do it in practice? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, Namdi Asamoah, I remember I was there. He, um, I thought I was there. Go ahead. There was a collision between him and I want to say DRC. I think because they were using DRC in the slot a little bit at the time. And there was a collision between him uh, and someone else. And he was on the ground for a while. Everybody thought it might be ACL. I mean, it took him mm. a long time. Yes. It wound up being a hyperextended knee. And if I'm not mistaken, that happened on like a Thursday and he still played in the Sunday game. So, yeah, hyperextensions you can play through. Yeah. Now, I can't it's, tell you uh, that Namdi played great in that game, but I can. Uh, I also can't tell you he played great in any game I that know. he was helping. I knew that was coming. <laughs> How did I not know that was coming? Uh, so so what it is is you got to get the stiffness out for, for it. Now, because they have a bye, it's like talk about a perfect time for a bye, their second one in the playoffs, obviously. Uh, this is the, the – couldn't come, come at a better time here, so – uh, it's more of a day-to-day -day situation. Just got to get the stiffness out and be able to bend it. And as we saw, Andre Dillard, again, as he was earlier this season when Dickerson left for a little bit, he was the fill-in. It's – why not Driscoll? Why not Driscoll? Why not Driscoll at left guard? Or just guard, I guess. Uh, I think they have pretty much made it clear through their actions this year that they think Jack Driscoll is a right side of the line player. And Andre Dillard is a left side of the line player. And in actuality, they sort of already gave those indications last year with the way they use Sua Opeta, who I think could only play one side of, of scrimmage. At least they felt he was when much, they, way more functional. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Not, yeah, one side of center. Um, sure. It's a comfort. Well, they thing tried them both. They did cross train them both. But as you said, you're right. We, we put this out a couple of years ago. He's really only comfortable, much more comfortable on one side. But so. With um, the thing with Dillard is, I just don't know if he's strong enough. He's got shorter arms. I don't know. He's he's definitely. I don't know if it's strength anymore. I mean, he's really yeah, added muscle up, right. and big. It but might be. Does he have that nasty mentality that you yeah. need for guard? But I mean, in the times he's been out there, well, first of all, Jack Driscoll is a nice player. He has played guard, so he has the mentality. But he's also I mean. someone who also lacks strength and and anchor. I mean, you know, it, with all the passing that you do in the league, it makes sense to have a guy like Dillard who, if he's jacked up now and can play guard, but you know he can anchor better or that he moves his feet better and is more comfortable on that side. I, that's a good point. I mean, they, it, they must have seen something, Adam, in Dillard for them to want to have made that move, whether it's because they were working on him in practice, as you reported a while back, and they must have liked what they saw and felt that was better. Well, here's the thing. If – now, obviously, the Eagles are hoping that he doesn't have to play uh, for Dickerson, but he did get some snaps this season at guard in a game. I, don't, I, I can't imagine it's enough for him to get a good contract, but at least it shows for him in, ver in terms of going in free agency that maybe, because he's now willing to do it. Remember, the big thing is he didn't want to play right tackle, and he wanted to play left. Right. So when we had the report in the spring that they were thinking about cross-training him in training camp, which they did, I have no idea. I never really checked into how many snaps because I just – thought he just couldn't do it and I just never thought it would come up and then who knows several months later he's doing it this could actually help him because you know obviously for compensatory matters that does matter and the fact that he's willing to do it will help him get a better deal he's gonna he's you know he's probably the one we talk the least about when we talk about free agents to be for the Philadelphia Eagles because he's not a starter and not a key backup it doesn't play much but I think he's going to be a fascinating case study uh, for, you know, the idea of can a person sort of rehab their image 
as a backup in limited snaps at a position that is so valued that he might get a good deal just based on draft stock and and how people thought of him coming out of college alone. So that'll be really interesting. But again, we'll see with Landon Dickerson. Now, we'll we'll see if the Eagles wind up coming out with an injury report this week. If they have to, you you said you believe that unless something changes, they have to. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically what it is is whether they practice or not, it doesn't matter. They have to have some sort of injury report. That could, it could be the estimate if they practiced, here's what he would have done or not done. That it, whatever anyone who, who's, who's got an injury. So yeah, um, well, well, it's very rare for a team during a bye week not to practice leading up to the Super Bowl. I just can't imagine that they won't do something, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so what did they do? The last bye, they they did two days. It was the Thursday and the Friday. They did an hour practice each day, very light, but you want to get out in the field and then give the team the weekend off. Oh. I think they oh, – that's right. They travel Sunday to uh, to Phoenix. should mention that. Okay. Travel Sunday. All right. Yes, that's the way they do it. They have a big ceremony when the teams get off the plane. You know, they sure, have, uh, sure. The social team. Yeah, it's 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 a big thing. And I then remember Monday I'm night saying, is the wacky media night, right, oh, where you get, like, that. you know, I don't like yeah, people I, on I, stilts I, and, like, clowns. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the league loves that. But I remember in, in 05 – I. I, I I didn't know any better because I had been in the Super Bowl before, but because it was the Eagles, I didn't know what to do. So I went to like every media availability. I asked Belichick a question. <laughs> he actually answered. It was actually a decent answer. Uh, I, I just because you don't know when you go to these things. Like what's the what what you sh- what, what, what what like when you go to the Super Bowl as a media person, you try to figure okay what what should I do? Should I go to every event? Should I go to every press conference? And then right. I. I I'm like, oh, geez, well, if they actually sent out a transcript, why am I going? <laughs> you know, I kind of yeah, man, anyway. you can go running in circles at these NFL events, whether it's the combine, the, anything, man. It's crazy. You can pick and choose your events, right? Yeah, right. definitely. All right. So, um, also, you know, as we understand it, you know, Jalen Hurts made it through the game, didn't throw a ton of passes. They controlled the game on the ground, but he did take some hits. As far as we heard, he was he came out of that game pretty sore. Uh, that's not uncommon. He came out of the – the, his first game back against the Giants sore. He was sore after the he – he's been very upfront about this. He was sore after the divisional round game. He's got two weeks here, but each week he does take more hits on that shoulder. Um, and, and it is it's, – it's sort of interesting. We'll see if – how they list him on any kind of injury report, if they do at all, because he wasn't on the injury report at all last week, even though he said he was sore. So we'll see if there's any – sort of um, different kind of listing on the injury report. He's, he's the starting quarterback. He's going to play. But I know some people have wondered if the ground offense you saw against the 49ers was, and some of the overthrows you've seen in the last two games yeah. is related to him just not being 100%. And it might be. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It's very subjective because we'll, we'll get, we're going to get started in like two minutes. Just We're going to do the Chiefs and we're going to get into this. So the Chiefs, it's crazy. They ended the last game. They, they they were down one receiver, Justin Watson. We're, we're not going to do Chiefs breakdown of the. We're not doing anything with the Chiefs other than injuries right now. We're we're going to start Thursday, uh, and then we're going to get in for next week. We got some great stuff in the Chiefs, but what we will tell you is the injuries. So, Justin Watson, who's like the shot play receiver out of Penn, for people who remember, uh, Watson was not. He didn't play due to an illness. So Juju Smith Schuster got hurt early, didn't return with a knee injury. He's had knee problems for his career, as we reported on. Uh, in, in March, the reason why he got such a discounted deal is because teams were concerned about the condition of one of his knees. Now, we have no idea if it's this is the same knee, but Gennaris Tony, what a shock. He got hurt. He, he gets hurt a lot. Ankle injury, didn't return. They call Hartman. He re-injured. He's had this pelvis injury for over two months. He unfortunately uh, re-injured it. He couldn't finish. Willie Gay, who's a super uh, middle linebacker, just one of the best defensive players, he hurt his shoulder, couldn't finish. The Jerish neither nickel corner has a concussion. Obviously, you're not allowed to return with concussion. They got all the injuries. So yeah, that is they're a lot. Bike came at the right time. That was a mouthful right there. So um, you know, on our our Monday night radio show at the Fanatic or Tuesday night show at the Fanatic, a couple people called in and said, you know, the Chiefs they're all they, they they reiterated what you just said, sort of talking about all the injuries at wide receiver and how none of them were that fearsome. That all the Eagles have to do is kind of bracket Travis Kelsey or double team Travis Kelsey. (laughs) And I I sort of had to go on a a long dissertation and and Q&A did this better than I could ever do it. Um, So you should listen to Q&A because 
Travis Kelsey does not run routes like a normal route runner runs routes. And Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey are so lockstep that they wind up doing things that you don't normally see in games. And what I mean is there's a lot of improv to what Kelsey does as far as like, you know, all right, this 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 corner or safety is playing a certain leverage. So I'm going to run the post, except in the middle of the post, I'm going to stop. Dipsy do. Now I sound like a Von. He always says dipsy do. I'm going to whirl around. <laughs> and and for whatever, and what it, it shows the brilliance of both of them. Mahomes knows what kind of improv moves Kelsey's going to make and finds a way to get him anyway. So as I tried to tell people, every week the defensive coordinator has probably looked at the Chiefs wide receivers and say, this team, you know, all I got to do is tr- stop Travis Kelsey. And every week, Travis Kelsey still catches six to 12 passes, 80 to hundred yards, one to two touchdowns. And it's because they just do it so differently that it's hard to defend, whether it's zone, whether it's man, they just have a very innate feel for how to beat both with subtle moves. And ra- and again, I know you, we don't want to get too much into the chiefs, but to answer the question about Travis Kelsey and, and trying to stop him from like the receipt, like the, the callers were saying it's, it's, it's sort of not that easy, even with, all the injuries that they have here at wide receiver. Um, And man, Adam, just like a year later, looking at this wide receiver group is so, you know, without obviously Tyreek Hill and with Nicole Hardman. You got to see this. It's, it's, it's it's, although they get explosive running after the catch and with uh, Mark uh, about a but it's just a different offense. Um, Yeah. So what they do is I'm assuming they're talking about site adjustments, which is the, which were the the way the Rams would on the greatest show on turf, they know by coverage. Okay, here's the way he's going to run that route. And the quarterback has to know it. Kurt Warner in this case had to know it. I heard Torrey Smith talk about it when he was on Sirius. It's just really cool how mm-hmm. you just know by coverage, quarterback knows how he's going to run that route and he's going to be there. But obviously, they have the scramble drill. When when Tyreek Hill and the scramble drill, I've never seen anything like it. How <laughs> he would know where to go, because they they're practicing it. It's just it's just something. It's just something pretty special, but um, yeah. So, so as we close off the Chiefs' injuries, yeah, they've got a lot to get through, but yeah, none of them are supposedly serious. And again, it's good for them that the bias happens. Yeah, obviously, Legarius Sneed would be the big one to watch. I mean, he's got a while to to be able to recover from the concussion, but sometimes these things linger and yeah, can be longer than you think. So, keep your yeah. eye on that. All right. Uh, Let's talk about Mojo really quick. Mojo is building the sports stock market where you invest in your favorite players. That's right. You invest in what you know. You know football. Stick to football, as I'm often told. Turn your sports knowledge (laughs) into real money with Mojo, the sports stock market, real stats, real value. You buy shares in these players. They guarantee you to a payout based on career-ending stats. No off days, no off season. Remember that, Adam, the whole no off days, no off season, because that's about to play in to uh, someone I'm going to bring up. The share prices rise and fall constantly in real time based on career-long projections. You can cash out anytime. You can build a portfolio. You buy and sell on your terms. Every play, every game, every season. And the app currently offers about over 300 NFL skill position players from quarterbacks to running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS. And just by downloading the app, you get a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Just click on the link in the description box of either this podcast or this YouTube video for the chance to win that free, those free shares of player stock. You got to be 21 and physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. But as I always say, Mojo will be in a state near you soon if you're in a different state. So you might as well download the app now and play with all that stuff see how the 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 prices rise and fall get yourself educated so when mojo's in your neighborhood you can start in on all the fun if you've got a gambling problem helps available at 1-800-GAMBLER adam who do you think i'm going to see how smart you are all right based on a little hint i just gave you a certain quarterback stock is up even though he hasn't played a game in month and a half care to register a guess on who that quarterback might be uh, quarterback has not played in a month and a half. Obviously, he you say that because he's because of injuries to yeah, some more, more like a month. He hasn't played since the end of the season, and yet his stock is up. Remember that hint I gave you about a minute ago? Um, 
things that can happen in the off season can impact what your career long expectations are, right? Like a coaching change, maybe? Like maybe you yeah, have a rough like year? Russell Wilson. Wilson. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. I know Russell Joe Banner Wilson. had a very strong comment about all the people were bagging on, on Russell Wilson. So he, Joe, without saying, obviously thinks it's a coaching issue. I, I, He and I won't see it the same way. Just talking to someone close to the Seahawks said that basically the West Coast offense is like the worst thing for Russell Wilson because he's a runaround quarterback. Right. Don't ask him to go through three or four progressions. He's got to get the ball out one or one and a half progressions or he's stuck. So maybe Sean Payton could do that. Maybe he could get him to be more disciplined. We'll see. Because Payton obviously thought he could. He would have taken the job. Yeah. You know? I'm I'm sort of in the middle. I would say I expect Russell Wilson to be better because of Sean Payton. But oh, yeah. I don't oh, know yeah. if you'll ever see the guy from three or four years ago who had like the highest – he had the highest passer rating for both an active quarterback or any quarterback for the first five years of his career. It was like him and Aaron Rodgers were one and two and, and sort of jockeying back and forth. I don't know if he'll ever be that guy again, but but on the same vein, Adam, there's a wide receiver whose stock price is also up because of the same thing, and that would be Cortland Sutton ah, from the Broncos, who went up uh, about, not a lot, 0.74%, but you can see there that that's what the expectation is. Nice. That's it. Yeah, it's interesting now because we're in we're we're down in February. Right. Uh, but yeah, you, you should feel good if you're in fantasy and dynasty league. At, at, they all go up. There's no doubt. I mean, a, anyone who's and anyone you have now. Unfortunately, Javante Williams coming back with an ACL injury, which you know it's, it's a problem. But um, they will run the ball because Peyton does believe in it, and they've got to fix it offensive line. They've got uh, Bulls. The uh, left tackle is out. He had a serious injury, so he, he, he missed a lot of time. But I can't wait to see what Sean Payton does with his team because th- th- their defense is good. That uh, Ivero, the D coordinator, is terrific. Taking over for Fangio, he does a great job. He got head coaching interviews, and they're, 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 they should have been way better last year. But it starts with Russell Wilson. I mean, he looked like a lost cause last year. No doubt about it. He did. All right, and obviously with Brock Purdy, he went from a guy who might be QB1 next year to now having a pretty long-term injury. He is down 2.85%, which is pretty yeah. significant because it's I'm, I'm, not like his stock price is very high. Yeah. Oh, so seven, until that game, he was 7-0. And, and what I understand, he's probably going to have reconstructive surgery on that elbow. Oof. So that's uh, – that's, 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 that, who knows? I know for a football player, it could be, it could be shorter time frame than a baseball player, but that's, it's such a shame. I mean, it's unbelievable. We get into the Eagles tape study against the Niners. Such a shame. What a, what a great story he was. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, he might still have a chance. We'll see. Uh, that'll, that's all down next year stuff yep. yeah, down the road. All right. Let's get into this Eagles tape, their offense against the 49ers defense. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to break news, but I, I want to say it anyway, man, the Eagles offensive line. Whew. I mean, just dominant again. They were dominant against the Giants. I thought they did a great job, especially in run blocking against the San Francisco 49ers, who brought in a excellent front, excellent defense, excellent front seven. Jason Avant said something funny, like, you know, how they started off cute a little bit with their running game, um, trying to pull the tackles, the traps, and things like that. And then eventually they just said, eh, screw it, let's just run inside zone. And that was like, Boom. You know, you saw the double teams up the middle and whoa. No, they they, they got it. I mean, he's they, – they, in fact, they were – they didn't run as many RPOs as they did against the Giants, but they got them. Uh, the Niners the, – now, now, one thing I will say, the Niners also had some really good uh, stops against the run. They they had and, – and kudos to the Eagles for, for, for going for a keep running. I mean, they, it's interesting because they – it's kind of one of these weird things. Like they scored 31 points, but only had 269 yards total on offense. Very kind of odd, a good yeah. Game, but it was one of the things they kind of knew what was going to happen. They they once they saw that Purdy was out and Josh Johnson was a quarterback, and they saw him struggle. It was like, okay, let we're up big. Let's just take care of the football. And then the start of the game, as I told you Sunday, and then I got a couple of good nuggets from people. Can a game well. I mean, I know that, again, the numbers don't show, but the, if you really examine the numbers, that's why you have to have the better context. He had seven explosive, there was 16 touches. And the thing that floored me, I, I, these smaller backs, you just never, like Kyle Shannon with Elijah Mitchell, who's his, his closer, 
just not even <laughs> 200 pounds. I don't know what Gamewell Gamewell is. Uh, I don't know what he what he weighs, but the thing that shocked me: eight straight plays, eight carries. But in, in the fourth quarter, like Kenny Gainwell. <laughs> yeah, that was that was sort of I a surprise. He, but he had those two explosives, like the one where just he went right and then cut left. I was like, whoa, I've not seen him do this. This, you know, obviously the Giants game was terrific as well. First one hundred yard game. You're finally seeing what we thought he could be. I don't know what the hell took him so long. We know he had a very disappointing training camp. I was there the day when he got – he didn't get chucked out of practice. Sirianni, he said, get off the field. Um, he, had two, he had two metal errors in two consecutive plays, which is a no-no. One is bad enough, two in a row. But give the kid credit. He's mentally tough. He's got himself together. And now you're seeing it. He had two explosives in the past game. I'm so fascinated. We'll talk. We'll start to get into more of this on Thursday's show, and then obviously next week. Just the, the potential game plan with Gainwell in it because he had two beautiful catches. I'm so fascinated to see what and 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 Sanders. Oh, one. I know people can understand. Well, why would they pull Sanders and not Hurts? So, coaching source not from the Eagles. He coaches on offense. Said this is his opinion. I said, what? What? what he goes. I said to this guy, what? Um, he doesn't coach quarterbacks. Coach another position. I said, why? Why would you not pull Hurts? At the start of the fourth, he goes, oh, it, the rule for quarterbacks is, he goes, this is pretty universal. For quarterbacks, you you have to be up by more than three scores, three touchdowns or a field goal, four touchdowns to start the fourth quarter because they have to score four times. That's the thought. Like, how the hell is the team going to get the ball four times and score every one of them? That's the thought process with it. And by the way, speaking of that, Hurts did not have one pass in the fourth quarter because they got up and they buried the football. Yeah, you know how I said in the post game podcast that every once in a while, you have to sort of, I don't know, recognize, read the room instead of I do what I do. Their quarterbacks were all both injured, and the I, I would have pulled them though. See, yeah, I the only I one who could it. throw could, could, couldn't even throw a ball yeah. two yards. Like I think I at that at that point, to me, when you do risk versus reward. I'm. I think it's more risky to leave him out than the. I think the 49ers well, we'll are going to score it. four touchdowns. Right. Well, think about it. Yes, it's obviously less risky than a running back running it. But and and Hurts never threw it in the fourth quarter. But what if a what if a, a lineman? Because remember, was it Greenlaw who punched Gainwell after the play? Yeah. Like four times. <laughs> well, what, what if he just pushed someone and that guy pushed into the Hurts' knee? That that's why I would have pulled him. But I understand what he's telling me. He's like, you don't get the rule. Yeah, because it's it's simple. It's four scores to start yeah. the fourth quarter, three touchdowns in the field goal, four TDs. If you if you're a four scores, pull the quarterback. He goes, there's, he goes. It's next to impossible to give up twenty four to out the. And as you just said, and you make a great point with with Josh Johnson in, then he got hurt. Of course, why the hell would you leave Hurts in there? I, I wouldn't have done it, but hey, they. It's hard to question Sirianni. He's so good and smart the way he handles his stuff. Sure. Yeah, he's another guy. Like everything that seems to he seems to do goes right. It's just very few. Very have there been any coaching sort of strategy issues you had with forget run pass, it's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about mm -hmm. not going for it, just okay, leaving this guy in the game. Um anything um that's sort, a good sort of, question. Sort of uh, ancillary issues with with because Doug, there were some issues with Doug. I think early on in his career, not not so much time management. He, there's some things he had to learn, but he was actually not bad at time management. In fact, remember when Andy, people were like, "Oh my God, he, it's Andy's disciple. He'll be terrible at time management." He wasn't. Yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah, I, I was surprised by how well Doug managed the clock. I guess I shouldn't have been. Most coaches are, especially offensive but coaches. Andy. Just just that yeah. Andy Reid isn't, yeah. and neither is Kyle Shanahan. But um, no, I I can't. I'm trying to think. If there's any time where well, I Andy's much thought, better at now, though, much better. Oh, yeah. In fact, that was a big part of our conversation Tuesday night in the Fanatic that this is a fascinating Super Bowl because it's the franchise where old Andy and his old core philosophies and principles are still, those fingerprints are still on the way this team is constructed versus the new Andy who went to Kansas City and was like, oh, let me try all these fancy new things I never did in Philadelphia. Like, pistol formations and a three, four defense and having wide receivers. <laughs> so it's, it, it's really fascinating. And he did get much better at time management uh, since he became the. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's so cool because Eagles still have the philosophy to throw more than run more in the first half, but I was certain that happened. 
you know, if you're going up three scores in the first quarter or early second quarter, obviously you're going to start taking the air out of the football. But I, I, this is just, and we'll, this will be obviously the, the story of the week will be Andy versus the Eagles. And I, I give Andy credit. He actually talked. He didn't make it like that. He said, he goes, Eagles against Chiefs, Philly versus Kansas. He just, he knew, and mm -hmm. he, he gets it. He's, he's great. Oh, I mean, how can you not? You of know? course, of course. I, it, 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 it's going to be off the hook next week when we're in our, it's just going to be ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it's Philly, it's Philadelphia versus Philadelphia West. I know. I mean, like you, everybody we're, there. We're going to have a list of, there, there are, there's some people I didn't even know that were there that work for the Eagles and sort of the background and business that, that came over with Mark Donovan, mm -hmm. who's the Chiefs president, he used to work for the Eagles, Reed, I mean, uh, Banner hired. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, the, so, so now I'll give, I'll give the Niners credit. There were some plays that they did. They 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 really got the RPOs. In fact, if you saw Bosa, they were actually playing. I don't want to call it a mush rush, but they were so worried about Hurts. This is why we said going to the Giants game Hurts is they got to get the RPOs back. This is everything for them. There were some plays where they just were they were like standing up and not trying to rush the quarter. They were not trying to get upfield because they you know they play the wide they have more wide nine steps I think than any team or they're certainly like top three. I think at one point they're most in the NFL. Kucerich, the D-line coach, is uh, you know a Jim Washburn and and uh, Schwartz disciple, so it's what they're going to run. And so anyway, there were some times where like I was told like they're not getting a field because they're making sure they're hemming him in that he's not going to get loose. And also give Hertz credit, there were a couple of times they clearly got more yards, but he went down or out of bounds because he was not going to ding his shoulder much, you know, as much as he can control it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I think that to your point about how the Eagles could run well at times, but also not have a high average, there were times where the offensive line got the push, reset the line of scrimmage, got the push on the defensive line, and the running back would get through, but then either get quickly taken down by a linebacker or the safety. So it's like they were a little bit loose up front, but then they were able to tighten it up pretty quickly on the back end unless the ball was going to Kenny Gainwell for some, you know, they, they couldn't stop him. You said seven explosive plays, which is usually on 16 touches on, on 16, 16 touches. Right. That's yeah, almost that includes, 50% of his touches. Yeah. That includes passes and, and, uh, and runs. Uh, yeah. Did he have some very low on runs? Yes. That's what made his yards per carry, but you look for coaches will always tell you, Oh yeah. I've mentioned this before, but probably weeks ago, the explosive play by coaching standpoint is five yards or more runner pass catch. It, that's what it is. And if you've got seven out of 16 touches, that's really good. Um, he, he's there's, there's something pretty, pretty good there. I know he's not the most, not been the most consistent player. We all know that, but you see it now when, when they really need him to come alive, he has. And, uh, and then here's another thing is you wonder because Scott Boston Scott is used intermittently. So like every now and then they use him. Do they keep going free running backs against Kansas city? We'll see. No doubt I don't know that, it. but it's interesting. I didn't yeah. expect it from this game. I'll be admitted. I got to the point where, like, all right, this I'm going to be wrong about him. And then all of a sudden, he's like, looks like a different guy. I don't know why. Right. So, so we said in Inside the Birds Live pregame show, Greg Cosell made a really um, interesting and important point that normally Nick Bosa lines up over left tackle. So, or you he we expected. Nick Bosa to line up over Jordan Mailata. And I remember I us. I said on no, no, I know. I was going to say, I remember you saying that unless the 49ers really wanted to test Lane Johnson and his injury and put Bosa over right tackle, which they did in the first half. Yeah, that was interesting. I, I didn't see it funny. I'll admit it. I didn't think it would be like every snap in the first half. I, oh, they were trying to test him. I, I guess I without I, I mean I talked to the Niners about something else about three or four things we'll, we'll get to them when we get to their offense but I uh see the thing is the second half they flip, if you notice they kept flip-flopping from side to side to find a better matchup and yes he definitely he played the run force well sometimes and but I don't he did get some pressures but overall, Lane handled himself well. I, I, I'm, I just, I don't know. If, we don't know that he got a shot, you know, for his injury. I don't know how he's doing this. It's just, the dude is unbelievable. I think the first statue might have to go to Lane Johnson. Either <laughs> it's either Jalen or Lane Johnson. 
after where they win the Super Bowl. But if they make it of Lane, he kind of has to be a statue of him kind of holding his midsection a little if, bit. If, so if I, I know I know if Bond watches the show. Uh, Jason, I don't know how the hell you play with this injury for a season. <laughs> don't, I, I know football players are different breed. I get it. Professional athletes are. But it's just, to me, I don't understand how you do that. Mind over matter is just uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Tory Smith, too, by the way. He said he played with it his rookie year. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, you have to hear him talk. Yeah, I, I don't. But did he say it was his entire? Because Yvonne said he had his whole, whole season. I think Tory said he happened early in his rookie year. Yeah. And he was a speed guy. How yeah, I know, right? I don't understand it. Hmm. I don't get it. All right. So that would be the Eagles. Anything else Eagles offensively that we missed there? I, th- I think their, their offense was sort of, you it know, was... you know, generic. We, we understand what they yeah. did well. Hurts only is Hurts definitely. So one person is one who graded the tape for said under pressure at least on he had ten incompletions, which is not good out of twenty five attempts, but at least five of them. He this guy said he graded uh, at least four under pressure. Now Hurts moved a couple times where he perceived pressure. It's true, can't deny it. But certainly he also had some passes where he could not step into it. He just he got pressured. Like they 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 O line did a good job, particularly in the run at certain runs where they just. By the way, two people told me they moved. The, this is this person who I trust. He does not. He did not see a game this year where the Niners defensive line got moved like the Eagles offensive line moved. Like think about that. This is yeah. the best. This is just one of the most stoutest defensive lines in football, as we said on Friday show. The tallest. Hmm. Most athletic, I mean, incredible. Eagles have the best depth when you all their edge rushers and so forth. But that kudos to them. Kelsey was incredible, by the way. I, I don't know what else to say about Kelsey. I, I I talked to people close to him this week who would say, hey, don't count him out coming back. I was like, hey, we learned our lesson the last three years. And both sides said, oh, I think this is going to be it. Nope, they came back. <sighs> this dude's Amazing. something else, 35 years old. So, so. He really is. All right, we're going to get into Eagles defense against the 49ers offense. Uh, First, we want to remind you to check out our friends at PHLSportsNation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto, so make sure you check them out at PHLSportsNation.com. Let's pause real quick for a word from Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people all over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schilder, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you stop into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. And I'm going in there. I am looking to probably get a used car. So I'm going to Sky. See Brett Shoulder and his team. Looking forward to it. Nice. Good, Good stuff. Yeah. All right. So defensively um, for the Eagles. Not a lot here. It just, this won't take long because I mean, it, you know, it a... all starts with Hassan Reddick getting that. that... Uh, that Keith? pressure. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, jog your mind here. Okay. Defensive free agents go sign over. The, obviously, Javon Kirsch was very good. Asante. I'd have to look up the numbers. What's that? Asante. He was very good. Um, Nigel Bradham, is, I think, is an underrated good solid. One. Yeah, you love that one. I know you love yeah. that one. But let me tell you something. Reddick has 13 games out of 19 with at least a sack. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. And by and again, sacks are individual one play. But his his I have to get how the I'll find out. We'll we'll have it for next week. How many of the Eagles have given him for quality rushes or or hurries or just making the quarterback move? It, it's it's this guy's some and he's relentless. It's just his second reaction ability to get past the quarterback and then come back and get the guy. It's so underrated. What a this has got to be in Howie Roseman's career, one of the best defensive free agents he ever signed. Has Listen, to be. you you tell me. I mean, Rodney McLeod, Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm was great. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Javon Hargrave. Sure. So really good. Hassan Reddick. Brad. O- I mean, he's had some really, really good ones last year. This guy's was he not a second team all pro? Who's that? 
Bradbury? Uh, yeah. Bre Reddick. Was Reddick too? Both. <laughs> Both. Oh, I'm sorry. Bradbury. Duh. Yeah. 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 Uh, folks, tell us on our YouTube. G give us your, in the last 25 years. Tw okay. Roseman was a GM since tw 2010. But of course he was he didn't sign Reddick then. I mean uh he didn't sign um Curse. But th this is incredible. I mean, Reddick he just doesn't stop. This is unbelievable, man. And and think about this. You and I were talking early on Tuesday about what their their rock people are overrating how much they, they have a lot of free agents, there's no doubt. But if you look at the skeleton of a roster, they're gonna have plenty of talent. This is not gonna be a pro they're, I'm not saying they're gonna get back to the Super Bowl next year or get in the championship game, but they're gonna still have a pretty good 10 or 11 starters under contract it's just the rest of them they don't That's right the problem. right so to make to illustrate your point javon curse was a very necessary signing as they were building up toward the super bowl and, and getting that premier pass rusher right. but there is no doubt about it and i love javon he's a great dude no doubt about it his Pre better years were with tennessee he did yes. not play better in philadelphia than he did in tennessee asante samuel in my mind, played as well with the Eagles as he did with the Patriots. He wasn't better. He wasn't worse. He was what you expected from a free agent. He had great moments um, with the Eagles, but he also had great moments with, with the Patriots. Oh, yeah. I think Reddick and Hargrave are examples of free agent signings who played better as Eagles than where they came from. Reddick, a little bit. I mean, he obviously had double oh, lot sacks, but I really think he, he was... came into his own this year. Yes. Javon Hargrave played way better. I mean, oh, he never, he never, he never played like this. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Absolutely right. No, and he, I no. think you can even make the, the argument that Malcolm Jenkins, while he won a Super Bowl in New Orleans as well, and first started off a corner, then played safety, I think he was asked to do more in Philadelphia yeah. and, way and more. was a better player here than New Orleans. But I'm saying for the first year, though, this is what, what actually should just clarify their mm -hmm. first year in their free agent year you know, of siding with the Eagles. I, I have a hard time believing anyone since Roseman was a GM. This is like this guy doesn't stay. He just doesn't. Not that anyone takes a playoff, but he's just relentless. And again, unfortunately, hurries are not an official stat. Pass rush rate like you could teams chart it themselves, but it's not an official NFL stat like PFF does it. But teams don't grade them the same way. Although I will tell you, D-line coaches are friendly with love that they think their pass rush numbers are very, very accurate. But again, the NFL doesn't recognize them. I wish they would start, they, they would start recognizing, come, like hurries, okay? I think they do that. But but NFL teams themselves may not grade it the same way that the NFL might call hurry. That's what it is. Got it. Got it. So, um, all right. So back to the Eagles defense and Redick, by the way. I spent a great deal of time <laughs> uh, on the radio the other night trying to explain why just because a play doesn't work doesn't mean it was bad play or a stupid sure. play. Sure. And the, the 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 play where Hassan Reddick hits Brock Purdy was an excellent play by Hassan Reddick. Truth be told, the expectation, because it's a downhill play action, quarterback under center, McCaffrey is your deep back, and then once the play ball is snapped, Debo Samuel, who split wide, runs orbit motion around McCaffrey. Now, ordinarily, the backside defender in that case, which is Reddick, is supposed to make sure he's playing contain on that orbit motion because if that ball goes to the motion, the orbit motion guy, and you're crashing the quarterback, you're going to give up a 25-yard reverse, which the, the 49ers do well and do a lot of. So the whole idea that, well, how do you leave Tyler Croft to block Hassan Reddick? Exactly. Well, let me explain to you this. If it's a play action pass and you're keeping seven in and one of your best weapons is McCaffrey and he's a decoy on a, on a play action and your other best weapon, Debo Samuel, is a decoy on an orbit motion, by the time the quarterback's going to throw, he has two options. His options are going to be Ayuk or a tight end. So if you keep George Kittle in to block Hassan Reddick there, then you're basically taking your three best targets on that play out of the equation and asking Tyler Croft to get open against uh, more, more guys in coverage. So it's not a bad play. I guarantee you that play has worked for the 49ers a million times before against teams with good defensive ends. The Eagles just made a better play. It doesn't mean 
Shanahan's an idiot or, you know, I, I listen, I get the Eagles fans. You can do whatever you want. You can have fun with it, but that play has probably mm-hmm. worked a billion times against teams that have really good edge rushers. Yeah, no, no doubt. In fact, Shanahan talked about what you, what you were saying. He said, he told the media, he goes, guys, you got to understand anytime we have play action, the tight end is going to have the pass rusher one-on-one. Croft has been in the league a long time, more of a Early in his career with Buffalo, he had some good years. He had a lot of injuries. He looked like a, he's like a decent pass catcher, decent blocker. He just he just missed. You know, right. it's a shame. And you know, the Niners now don't have a, they don't have the quarterback will be this coming up season. It's, it's awful. Right. Um, but you know, the the it's kind of one of these weird things like with this because the Niners offense is so inept. The Eagles play coverage mostly, and they sat on these routes. It's like this Josh Josh Johnson. Just didn't he just was indecisive. He had a couple of nice throws. Other than that, it was it was a struggle. It was just it was really hard. There's not much here to say, folks. The Eagles had their way. He also, but when the when early in the game when before Purdy got hurt, he had some good pressures because Johnson held on the ball. They also had some good pressures. Even and Dominic and Sue had two had two pressures. Reddick was amazing. Sweat had some good rushes. Uh, they closed really well. The receivers, quarterbacks held on the ball to. Long so it's easier to read so you can close when the quarterback isn't sh- quite sure, and then when you when you're reading the routes, you know exactly where to go, and that that was it. Yeah, Actually. absolutely. A um, couple bad. I, I, I do think a that... couple bad run, uh, run defenses. They had a couple. Um, McCaffrey on that run, obviously, he just give him credit, but tackling was terrible. Yeah, it wasn't good, especially in the secondary. I mean, of course, Epps comes into the line of sc- or the point of attack, tries to make a tackle, but then he. Slips away from uh, what was it? Was it Gardner Johnson and then Slay after that? I think. Uh, it was yeah, the last and I could to... tell you, I could tell you from a 49er source, they thought they could get the corners because they don't. I've heard this from several teams that the they don't think the Eagles corners want to tackle. Sometimes teams have told me, hmm. which is kind of like most corners. But but yet, if you if you look at the way the Eagles have tackled this season, the corners have actually done all right. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but they felt that if they could block well, the court, if they didn't have to throw a lot, they'd be able to be able to run on, if they could get to the second level with McCaffrey. And he did on that one and a couple others. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it didn't matter because they couldn't throw the football. And it's just such an odd game. Being here in Mobile, so many people wanted to see um, a, a great game. We all thought it was going to be a great game, and uh, it just wasn't because of the quarterback. Yeah, definitely. And by the way, part of the the reason for the Eagles five man front, and then sometimes they'll bring another guy down is that you get an extra edge setter on each side. So it's hard to run outside at the Eagles corners because the whole construct of their five man front is to have two edge setters and make you force the run inside. So that's why uh, you can try to take aim, but you know, you almost have to like really scheme yourself to be able to do that. And by the way, Reddick, yeah, just going to add on that what you just said, Reddick is actually, I wouldn't call him the best force player. For the run, but when he's been asked to do it, he's he, he's been better in coverage than anticipated, and every like the the little things about his game that people would knock and have not been a real problem, here, which is also a good thing. There you go. Uh, we before we get out of here though, we should give a lot of credit to Avante Maddox, who uh, uh, you know coming came back from that toe injury, and you know as we said, we we were told he's not a hundred percent. You know, he's not like what you would expect normally from Avante Maddox, but he certainly looked good enough to go out there and make plays. So. Like Lane Johnson and Jalen Hurts, hats off. They're 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 riding the magic wave right now. I would say he was definitely back earlier than first anticipated from people close to the situation. They were not expecting him. This was sort of a long shot when he got hurt, and then he wanted to play. He got medically clear to play. He played limited snaps, and plus they didn't need him. You know, if the game had been close, we wonder how much he would have played because they had they played different sort of personnel groups because they remember the not the Niners are a heavy run based team. And as you saw, they Purdy couldn't throw, so they ran it with a down three touchdowns. I know. So, why don't they just do Wildcat? I just I, I know. I was hoping because I, I was looking for something <laughs> exciting <laughs> by the th- by midway through the third quarter. Exactly. So I was hoping it that was so Shanahan fantastic. was going to draw up the wing T or the triple option or something crazy <laughs> like that. Right. I was hoping. So, I mean, you did see a pass from McCaffrey, but that was about it. So, all right. Yeah, right. But it, was, it was terrible. It's a shame. I feel for the for the fans who've spent a lot of money, you know, we feel for you. I know a lot of people spent, you know, 
thousands to go. The ticket prices were ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, though, for the people who listen to me, a couple of people thanked me on Twitter. I said about a month ago, get American now. If you're from Philly. The prices were under 200 bucks nonstop round trip. I booked mine for 187 and, and um, not that you want to take Southwest after all their issues. It's one, one of the airlines, although I like Southwest. I've, I've taken it for years, but the problem is they don't have nonstops to Arizona. Only think American. I think Americans put a ton of of uh, of, of nonstops in Philly. Awesome. Well, I know we'll be on some flights out there next week, but we still got some more ITB pods and some other Fun. coverage to do yeah. to get to get through before we get there. You'll hear from Can't us wait. again on uh, Friday mornings ITB pod. So hang with us. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. As always, we thank you, and we know you are fired up. So we thank you for flying with us. Inside the birds.